So like I said back in my uh, Power Rangers retrospective video I did like three and a half years ago, I said that Zeal was a bit of an odd spot for me. I didn't necessarily watch it because I had a strong disliking for the Zeo suits. And can you blame me? I mean, even to this day, the Zeo O-Ranger costumes are probably one of my least favorite suits of all of Sentai and Power Rangers. I mean, there's just something about them that, especially the visors. I mean, you look at Zeo 2, which is yellow. I mean, what are those fat chopstick eyes? I mean, come on. So, Zeo was like the one black spot in my run from Mighty Morphin to Time Force that I knew nothing about. I mean, shoot, I even watched Turbo, and I'll get to Turbo next, sadly. So, leading into this, I was a bit excited to finally um, fill the gap that I'd missed, because it, it always bugged me that I had never had a chance to actually sit down and watch Zeo. So, I was excited, actually, going into this for the first time to finally see this, and I've heard a lot of people say a lot of decent things about Zeo. I even had one guy in our little Skype group thing that said it was his favorite season of Power Rangers and all this stuff. So, I go into a season with some pretty decent expectations, and just like most times, Die Ranger, RPM, the two biggest candidates of this, it comes out as a big disappointment. Um, you'll kind of—I'll I'll explain it more when I get near the end. But honestly, the theme song lied. Uh, the theme song for Zeo is actually really fantastic. It's a sequel-esque song to the original Mighty Morphin theme, proclaiming that they're stronger than before. Go Zeo! <laughs> All that zazz. The theme is actually freaking fantastic, and it's one of my favorite Power Rangers themes to date. Still not as good as the original Mighty Morphin theme, but I would put the space theme over this, just because I love space. But, the show itself, <clears throat> I wouldn't necessarily say is better than Mighty Morphin. As a whole, it, Season 1 and Season 3, I would put higher than Zeo. But Season 2, maybe equal. So before we go into it, you know I always like to do this. So here's Zeo 5's card. I do like the artwork they got for these. These are O-Ranger Daiso pictures. Maybe when I get keys I'll start doing that instead. I don't know. Like I said it's Zeo so enthusiastically. Come on go say you're so misinformed. Zeo isn't that good. Well, not necessarily is the season you're from, but I would watch his Mega Force over Zeo. I'm gonna get haters for saying that. <laughs> I'm gonna get haters anytime I say I like Mega Force over another season. Too bad. So where does Zeo start? Well, shouldn't it be obvious? Right where Mighty More from season three left off. Power Chamber's gone. Kabloosh. They're all sags. They're looking around the, at the rubble of the command center. Well, what are we going to do? Back on the moon, Zed and Rita are throwing a party in their castle. Suddenly, earthquake on moon, because that happens. Rita looks at her telescope and she gets freaked out over something. The rangers start digging in the pile of rubble because they see something glowing. Ta da! The Zeo Crystal. Somehow. Because you can drop something while teleporting, apparently. So remember I said that Goldar and Rito grabbed the thing and then teleported out. So there's two questions that come out of that. One, how is the Zeo Crystal still there? And two, how did uh, Goldar and Rito end up in some neighborhood with amnesia? I mean, I know that they said that the command center is supposed to have some kind of thing to not allow evil people inside. But what did it allow, like, did it screw up them teleporting out or something? They didn't really explain that. It just seemed like a weird random turn of events or something. There's no real uh, solid explanation as to why this happened, but it just happens. Goldar and Rito end up becoming 
servants to Bulk and Skull because of this, which is kind of hilarious. See two evil beings being maids to two idiots. <laughs> I love how Bulk and Skull can do things sometimes. So back on the moon, uh, Zed and Rita and the rest of her gang abort a mission because the Machine Empire is coming. Well, who the heck is the Machine Empire? Apparently it's a force stronger than they are. That's saying something because I thought at the beginning of MNPR Season 2 we established that Zed was the strongest being in the universe. And now we're establishing that he's not and that Mondo is. And then in two more seasons we'll establish that Mondo isn't the strongest being in the universe either. Eh, making things up as you go. You usually get weird little things like that. We've had three different strongest beings in the universe in <laughs> a span of six seasons. So, the Machine Empire basically scares Zed, Rita, and them all off. They're trying to figure out where to go to get out of, you know, out of their way, and they end up taking Serpentera and going to Master Vile's place. Moving in with old Daddy. But they don't grab Goldar and Rito because Zed's butt mad that they failed. So as the Zeo Crystal throws the Rangers underground into the basement of the command center, they end up stumbling around for a little bit and finding the power chamber, which is basically the new command center-ish thing. It's like a stowaway in case of emergency command center. Where they find Zordon and Alpha, but he's alright. And they explain to them that the Machine Empire is here. They're a lot stronger than Zed and Rita were. They basically need Earth in this little solar system area to complete their um, conquering of the universe. Which, once again, kind of... Well, I wouldn't say it contradicts what happens in, in space. Because after what happens at the end of Zeo, there was probably enough time for other stuff to happen. I don't know. I think they established that the United Alliance of Evil was... A thing at this point they were just kind of leading into it some and then went full force on it in space but the powers are gone the power coins were destroyed in the alien rangers arc so what do well the zeo crystals apparently are their new power source the zeo crystals that they picked up become the zeonizers which are basically the morphers i don't like them as much as the dino morphers or the dino bucklers if you want to be that guy I don't know what the Zeonizers are called in O-Ranger, so who cares? I don't think anybody cares about O-Ranger. <laughs> if you know anything about O-Ranger and its backstory. And they're basically just like one thing here, and click. And they turn to the Zeo Rangers, which like I've already established, hate these costumes like crazy. They're really bland. The neck thing is okay, but the visors, aside from Tommy's, the star, the rest of them look stupid. Especially... Yellow and pinks just irritates me. I mean, an upside down triangle, fine. A rectangle, eh. An oval just looks stupid. I don't know what the heck this is. They're two fat chopsticks. Seriously. I mean, the turbo suits, Car Ranger suits aren't too great either, but jeez. It's just, ugh. I still defend my per reasoning for not watching Zeo the first time. <laughs> Because when you're a little kid, things like that can make or break a season for you. And uh, I still don't like them. At all. I actually think I kind of like the Megaforce Ghost Sager suits more. And I really don't like those costumes either. So they do this real nice little setup for the introduction of the Zeo powers. Where it shows the little Mighty Morphin suits in the back. And uh, Batsuit-esque alignment or display, that's the word I was thinking of, display, with the instrumental of the Zeo theme playing. It was real nice, really nice setup. And then they go and fight the Cogs, which are basically the little goons of the season, where they go, uh. They kind of like stand in a, a standing up pooping stance while doing this. Chugga, 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 chugga. That's how Cogs work, apparently. Mondo's weird. Because it says Zordon established that oh, you need to dis completely dismantle them to kill them. Yeah, I don't think punching them into the chest twice is considered completely dismantling them, but whatever. What are you going to do? Now, how 
complicated that would make fight scenes if they had to sit there and like rip them open and kind of like rip wires out and whatnot. <laughs> Maybe if uh, Billy was still a ranger. Oh yeah, Billy's not a ranger anymore because there were five crystals and he felt like he would work better as a technical advisor. Which I established back in MMPR Season 1 during the Green Ranger arc where he became familiar with the um, the the technology and the computer and everything of the command center that would eventually come out to change Billy and make him a, you know, and grow with his character and whatnot. And this is the result of that. He's not a ranger anymore. He feels like he's more important as a technical advisor. So he's basically like a second alpha, which is cool and all because it makes a lot more sense for Billy to be, you know, like a weapons Megazord designer instead of an actual fighter. Even though Billy is one of my favorite Mighty Morphin Rangers, and it was kind of sucked to see him not in suit anymore. So, Zeo Beginning, which is the opening two part, isn't too bad. Um, it does establish everything pretty well, it establishes the new uh, villains pretty nicely, and it does establish the point of the powers really nicely. But before I want to go on, I want to talk about something about the Zeo powers themselves. Remember back in, um, Season 3, when they established that the Zeo crystals grow stronger as time continues. Well, they do make that evident here. At the beginning, they aren't all that powerful. But we'll hit a few key points as we go through that'll, that'll basically show that, yes, they do get stronger. And at the same time, that also brings up questions for the next season. But then again, Turbo is a giant question mark in its own right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be saying a lot about Turbo, and I'm going to find an Overdrive stab in this review somewhere. It's become status quo of mine. Insult Overdrive in every review. So, I think you already guys already know my thoughts on Zeo at this point, because I've basically ripped it apart <laughs> before I even started talking about the story. And the one reason why is because it basically goes back to an MMPR Season 1 um, approach. More filler episodes and story episodes, and it makes Zeo drag a lot. And Mondo basically, Mondo and the rest of the Machine Empire, the House of Gadgetry, which is basically his family, falls into the MMPR Season 1 Rita and Gang department, where they don't really do anything that clever, per se. It's basically just stupid little things to try to make the rangers trip over their own feet and kill themselves or something. I don't know, but at least Rita had some charm to her, always screaming at everybody in like a butt rage or something, but Mondo is just... They established that Mondo was a great, powerful force, and even made, made Zed run away. But we, I feel like we never actually get that proven to us. Like, how strong is Mondo exactly? Why is Zed so afraid of him? He's conquered the entire universe. I, I don't see it. I'm starting to sound like me talking about Venjax back in RPM. He conquered the entire world. But then when he has fights the Rangers, he, he looks like he barely conquered the state of Mississippi. Like, I, I don't believe that Vengex took over the entire planet. And I don't believe Mondo and the Machine Empire took over the entire uh, universe or galaxy or whatever. Like, yes, I'm putting Vengex and Mondo on the same level of suck as when it comes to villains. They're, they're basically just as bad. At least Benjex had one interesting little pawn. I mean, the entire House of Gadgetry was just a big joke to me. I, I think Rita and Zed were better established villains than these guys were. I'm glad that they didn't play any major roles after the season. I mean, yeah, they did pop up a little bit in space, but then again, everybody did. But I just never got threatening from these guys. So we went a little bit with nothing happening like usual. MMPR Season 1 bullcrap. Billy apparently had graduated already. Weird, isn't it? Apparently they misread some test scores or something saying, Oh, you graduated already. Why are you still here? Go. Here's your diploma. Get out. Go, nerd. Uh, so he ends up going to Aquatar for a little bit to help out with some kind of water 
toxic thing. So he's basically gone for a little bit. So he comes back like four episode, four or five episodes later. That was basically the gist of it. Nothing much happens there. It's just a little bit of character development towards Billy because it leads into something that happens to him later. Now for bullcrap. Because Zio doesn't have enough of that going on. We have this three-parter called There's No Business Like Snow Business. Terrible title alone. You know this is going to be good. When the title sucks. But what happens at the beginning, and the fact that this is even a three-parter, is depressing in its own right. But basically, Kimberly breaks up with Tommy through post service. Through U.S. Postal Service. Because that's... Good job. No, it's stupid. They were trying to force a Tommy Cat thing, but this whole thing just felt face palmish, and I really did face palm when this happened. I was just like, "Come on, you could have done better than this, guys!" Like seriously. I mean, Tommy was just doing weights and rock. He was reading off, and Tommy was like, "Wait a minute, hold up, hold the phone, give me that." Punk broke up with me <laughs> over a letter. I'm offended by this. Next time I see her, I'm going to talk to her about it. I'll get to that. If you know if you know anything about Turbo. <laughs> Another shot of Turbo. What was that, like four? Five? Turbo's still better than Overdrive. There it is. I knew I'd do it. <laughs> I'm going to use that one again. So the rest of this pathetically stupid three-parter is that they go on a snow trip to try to get Tommy's mind off him, and he meets this lady who's basically like a ski instructor, and she starts to fall for him, which is kind of creepy because I think they established she's an old lady and Tommy's a teenager. Well, not old lady, but like in her 20s or 30s, so this would technically be along the lines of pedophilia, even though Tommy looks older than she does. <laughs> oh, boy. Just, just go with it. it it's a big what the heck moment, but it, it, why is this a three-parter? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense for it to be a three-parter at that. So, after this, we get this really, I would say, completely unnecessary story arc that really doesn't do anything, and it involves Tommy having a brother that apparently he didn't even know about or something. I don't know. I didn't necessarily watch it during this watch-through because... Like, I didn't even know it existed. Like, I didn't even know the story arc existed. Like, I watched the first episode, and I felt like it really wasn't going to go anywhere. So then I kind of skimmed over the episodes and the thing, and I was right, it kind of didn't go anywhere. So basically, Tommy finds out he has a brother. Mondo kidnaps him for no reason. Tommy gets his butt kicked by Mondo. That's, like, the most important thing that comes out of this. Tommy gets his butt kicked by Mondo. Big point, right? Yeah, Ranger getting his butt handed to him, but it, it, it establishes something. Plus, we got the Red Battle Zord, which is something I like to talk about because I do like, and this is something that really disappointed me when we got to Lightspeed Rescue because of the whole Megazords that uh, Lightspeed built were scrap parts and based off of Megazords that were destroyed back in like Turbo and MMPR and uh, Space and stuff like that. But the Red Battle Zord was a Zord that Tommy made that was based off of the Battle Boards when he was on Aquatar that were controlled via willpower and stuff. Now, I know that's not what this thing was in O-Ranger. It had nothing to do with Cocker Ranger. But the fact that they had actually done that, you know, he based something off of the Battle Boards to give to Tommy. It was actually a real nice little way to tie things up. And to be granted, the thing even looks like a Battle Borg if you get down to it. Like, it has the same motions and movement and everything. And that's, I kind of like the Red Battle Zord for that. Because I'm a, I'm a sucker for little, like, hints and references back to older seasons and stuff like that. I haven't seen Mystic Force yet, but I know that there's another tie-in in that season. I've been kind of spoiled <laughs> on Mystic Force a little bit. Mystic Force sounds boring. 
So after that whole little fiasco of Tommy's brother, it kind of went nowhere. Uh, time for Sixth Ranger. Uh, apparently, they find a signature coming from space or something that matches the frequency of the Zeo crystal's powers. It's in a big pyramid. Go figure. The thing crashes after the Rangers are getting their butts kicked to them, butts kicked to them by a monster, and he comes out and mops the cogs up. The suit is actually not too bad. It's probably my favorite of the Zeo O-Ranger suits because it's got the gold shield. It's black. It's got... A, it's supposed to be the kanji or Japanese script for king because an O-Ranger, this guy was called King Ranger. And it's, it's easily the best suit in them of the team. He's even got this cool little staff that opens up and shoots electricity. And his the pyramid is a thing called Pyramidus, which is just OP as all get out. It just stands up, shoots lightning bolts, and blows things up. Pyramidus is actually kind of cool. I like him. But we don't know who this guy is. They lean towards it being Tommy a few... I mean, Tommy. Yeah, he's two rangers at once, guys, because Tommy is just that awesome. No, I mean, Billy. They, they hint at it being Billy. Skull, for some reason, was someone hinted at. And also Tommy's brother. Mm. Billy and Tommy's brother make sense, right? Because, I mean, how's the trend of Power Rangers up to this point? They establish a new character. Those new characters find out that they're Rangers. Person A becomes Ranger. I mean, it happened with Cat. It happened with Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. Why not? It happened with... Tanya, thank you. I forgot her name because she kind of just adapts the powers and knows how to fight for some reason <laughs> and whatnot. And, and I mean, it makes sense, right? It's gonna be Tommy's brother. Brothers fighting alongside each other. It's Lightspeed Rescue before Lightspeed Rescue. It's a, one's a girl in Lightspeed. So we go a couple episodes of nothing, but we kind of get hints at who it's not. <laughs> The skull thing kind of gets ratted out. Billy admits that it wasn't him and whatnot, yada, yada, yada. But he's... The Gold Ranger said he can't tell him. I'll just go with it. I'm going to assume it's based off of the whole thing that Zordon said. You're not allowed to tell others of your power or you'll lose your power type thing. If Zordon even gave him the powers to begin with, I, I, I doubt it, but... You never know. Seeing how Zordon was rumored to put the Quasar Sabers on Miranoi, even though that was never actually established, it makes sense when you think about it. But I got a whole rant on Lost Galaxy when I get there. So, he gets shot down while being chased by bounty hunters and crash lands on Aquatar. The Quetian Rangers, uh, the Alien Rangers, take him in. And we finally get to find out who he is. Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? Young Morphs and I don't know who the heck this man is. Who is this guy? All this lead up for about... What? Almost... Five, six episodes? And we get character unidentified. That's how you not do a... Hide the identity of somebody hype thing is to make it a character that you haven't even established yet. His name is Trey. He's from a planet called Triforia where basically people have three personalities. You thought split personality syndrome was a problem. What about tri personality? I'm a psych major but I don't want to have to put up with that kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> the textbooks say nothing about a person with three personalities. That would be weird, though. So he crashes, or... Well, they, they, the Quetian Rangers send him back to Earth. And Zordon and well, Alpha and Mondo get into this weird shield war over the command center. It's stupid. It's basically, Mondo put a shield over the command center. Alpha tried to turn it off. He does. Mondo puts another shield back around the command center. 
And then Alpha tilts where Trey lands on Earth so we won't hit the force field and blow up. Okay. How the heck can Mondo even put a shield around the command center like that anyway? Couldn't he just do that when the Rangers teleport back to the command center and, and then? But Mondo's an idiot. He, he's really an idiot. He splits into his three personalities, one of them being that guy from Captain Planet, the one about heart and whatnot, because that's an emotion, that's a personality, apparently. How the heck can you have a heart personality? You just go out there and start making out with everybody and everything or something? He just starts making out with his power staff or something. He establishes now that he's in three personalities or three bodies or something. Cool fact is that the this, this isn't a special effect. These are actually triplets that they got to play the trays. I actually kind of like that little touch that they did. I mean, it makes sense, right? Get triplets. Don't do some really, really cheesy special effects that would end up looking terrible. He says he can't morph or use his, any of his gold ranger powers while he's splitting three people. So he needs to transfer his powers to somebody. Billy. I mean, he's he's there. He's waiting. Well, he can't. I don't know. remember if I established this in my Season 3 review or not, but he took a big lightning bolt in the face when the command center blew up. Apparently, this did something to his body that made it to where he can't morph anymore. Oh, I think they said something about it breaking his connection to the morphing grid or something. As weird as that sounds, it kind of makes sense. I guess. <laughs> I say that very loosely. I don't know if it makes sense or not. So, who are we going to give it to now? Tommy's brother. Knew it! He's going to get him after all. Nope, Jason. They bring Jason back. Tommy hunts Jason down and brings him to the command center. And Jason becomes the Gold Ranger. Weird, right? It kind of comes out of left field. But at the same time, it's nice to see Jason back. Hearing his version of the yeah and whatnot. Now granted, I like him better in the Red Ranger suit than I do the Gold Ranger suit. But what you gonna do? Jason's back. Yay. And him and Tommy are still buddy buds. It was kind of cool though. Before Trey leaves, though, he gives him these little disc thingies that unlock the Super Zeo Zords, which look awful. One's a one's a Red Patrick Star robot. One's a a box with limbs. One's a circle. One's I don't know. They're basically shaped like their visors, and they look stupid. But the Super Zeo Megazord doesn't look too bad either. We see him next episode when Mondo pulls the sword out of the ground that he used before to kill the Rangers. But the last time he used it, he ended up killing himself. But why is he here? Machine Empire, people can rebuild themselves. So Mondo's already died once. No wonder they've basically broken away from the Alliance of Evil and started to go rogue. I mean, shoot, they're indestructible. So he pulls the sword out of the ground. They make the Super Zeo Megazord, which I actually think has one of the better Megazord combination sequences ever, because they like all fly into the air form. And then they just kind of like do like this ground looking up view where you kind of see them like fall into place and then they just kind of land on top of each other. It's really hard to describe it, but if you if you've seen it before, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's probably one of my favorite combination sequences because it just looks so cool from like that view and like when they when they come near the ground and like it starts sh like the camera starts shaking and you just see like the pieces hook on to each other it really I, I just like how it looks this is me being me remember and they kill Mondo hmm what a loser so what now well Goldar and Rito got their memories back and they're back with Zed and Rita who are also back. I didn't establish that because it kind of went under the radar. They're in an RV on the moon. This is what has happened to our great villains from Mighty Morphin. They're driving around in an RV 
on the moon. And people wonder why I like Mighty Morphin more than Zeo. <laughs> Seriously, there's not really much going on here. So they give Goldar and Rito this rocket to try to send up and blow up the Machine Empire's castle. The thing backfires on him and turns into a monster named Louis Kaboom, who basically forces himself into the lead role of the Machine Empire like a douche. And this guy's an idiot. He's just a big rocket with a face. And I don't know how the heck he managed to take over the Machine Empire. But he does. And I, I don't get it either. Two episodes later, we get introduced to this guy called Auric, which is basically like a... Like a temple god thing or whatnot. I don't know. And he doesn't play an important role after this episode. They establish him as like this great, powerful body of might or something, like a titan god protector thing. And after this episode, out of the episodes I watched, he only showed up one more time. And he was never established ever again. I don't know what the point of this guy was, but he was just kind of there. And he's a bit of a softy because he doesn't like to fight. He's easy to deceive, though, but eh, I don't even know what his purpose was. No one remembers him. only reason I remember even to talk about it is because there's an episode with his name in it. I was like, oh, yeah, this guy's like a thing. I completely forgot about this. Oh, boy. So now we get two things from Zeo that are actually good. Like, up to this point, Zeo has bored the mess out of me. Nothing exciting, nothing threatening, nothing really too interesting has been going on up to this point. Like, seriously. I really, really was lulling to sleep up to this point. But now I get introduced to Prince Gasket. And this is the best thing that came out of Zeo. He is Mondo's older son, um, Sprocket's older brother. In O Ranger Sprocket turns into Gasket. So basically, what's his name in O Ranger? Is there twice now? Yes. He was disowned by Mondo because he fell in love and married the daughter of one of his rivals. So now that he found out that old daddy's gone, I'm gonna come over here and take the throne over like a prince would. He kills Louis Kaboom, thank God, and, and, and makes a pretty decent entrance as he comes in, wrecks crap up, kidnaps Tommy the next episode, and brainwashes him into and thinking he's the king of the Machine Empire. Wow, look at this, he's already done more in two episodes than Mondo did the entire season leading up to this. Good job. Pretty interesting little plan, though. But Zed and Reed are ticked off, still, because now they're afraid that Mondo's going to take over Earth in the shorter amount of time than it did for Zed and Reed it to. So they end up helping the Rangers by teleporting them to this little world place thing that um, Gasket had held Tommy in. And Tommy was fighting um, Jason at this point, because Jason was already there. <clears throat> Volk and Skull are accidentally teleported there too and they were trying to shut the force field down with this lizard gladiator dude person thing and they managed to fight off a bunch of Cog Ziggy style just flopping around and the Cogs just kind of trip over themselves and whatnot. It's pretty funny to see Volk and Skull beat up a bunch of Cogs. They need to be completely dismantled to be destroyed and Volk just butt munches them. That sounded disgusting. <laughs> but and it, and it just and it kills the cogs. Zordon, you freaking liar, douchebag, moron. I love you, Zordon. Don't die. Oh. Oops. Spoilers. If you don't know that by now, where have you been? 
so eventually all the rangers get there and cat I guess I'm stuck in my throat. Cat winds him back to himself. Like she's basically just hugging him, he's like, please Tommy, please remember who we are and he and he does. It was a it was a pretty interesting little two, three parter if you want to count the episode before the part of the story. It was real interesting though, I won't lie. It could have been better, but it was still interesting. But those, those few episodes here after, more filler episodes, are still pretty interesting nonetheless. Because Gas gets better than Mondo. But then Mondo ends up coming back, and Gasket aborts mission because he's afraid of him. So Rita gets a brand new power staff. Finster managed to make her one. Let's make Cat evil. Yay, shoot your purse. Oh. Purse monster. Well, this is going to end well, right? Dang actually ends up turning out to be pretty dang powerful. I mean, it beats the Zeal Megazord. Ah, that sounds... Oops. <laughs> like, you like the little high pitch thing I just did? I got hiccups or something like that. Dinner's not settling too well with me right now. So, ah. <laughs> Whew. The, the Zeo Megazord and all of its helmets can't stop the, um, how do I put this, gumball monster? It's a big pink fat thing. It looks like, what's his name? Kid Boo from Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Z. It's a big fat pink thing. It's like, bull. I don't think it doesn't really sound like that. It sounds like a little annoying schoolgirl, but it looks like it would just be kind of like gurgling on its own tongue. Oh, that's what it looks like. It would sound like, but the thing is actually pretty powerful and it beats the Zeo Megazord pretty decently. And Mondo gets butt hurt and sends it to another planet because he can do that apparently, which brings up more questions as to why he hasn't done it with the Rangers yet. I, don't know. I guess Mondo's got a ego pride issue that he needs to work on. So he sends a Megazord, or he sends a Megazord, he sends a monster to take control of a Megazord. I haven't established this yet because I just now remembered, but Billy's an old man now. Uh, yay? Apparently David Yost left the show because he wasn't getting paid enough anymore. Doesn't this sound familiar? So now we got an old guy trying to act like Billy and kind of not doing a good job of it. So a couple of the alien rangers come down and try to turn him young again with some age ray thing. And they later come back with some water from their version of the Fountain of Youth or whatever. Try to get him to revert to his younger self again. And it kind of works, but they're like, no, we need, you need heavier doses, heavier treatments of this stuff. So we're going to take you back to Aquatar and do this. End up freeing the Megazords after this really, really awkward moment of Mondo's monster controlling the Zeo Megazord versus the Purse monster controlling the Super Zeo Megazord. And it just, it's a really surreal scene having... A monster from one evil force versus a monster from another evil force fighting each other with the Rangers Megazords. It's such a weird little weird little event. That was probably the most entertaining part of this season. Just because of how weird it was. They managed to get both Megazords back. And the two monsters said, screw it, let's team up. Here come the alien rangers. We got to team up Zeo, aliens, versus everything. The the footage is taken from O-Ranger versus Kaku Ranger, which was the first Sentai team-up movie. Well, first in the continuation thing. That was the first one that established that every season from here on out would have a Sentai crossover movie. The first one was actually Go-Ranger versus Jacka, but... I still want a Zoo Ranger versus Jetman, but it'll never happen, sadly. Oh, Zoo Rangers are coming back in the Koryuja movie. 
You have no idea how excited I am for that, but I'll get to that when I get to that. Actually, this is a real nice fight sequence with the Zeo Rangers and the aliens beating up all these cogs and whatnot. But it kind of sucked that when the monsters grew, the alien rangers didn't somehow summon the power of the shoguns. Oh, wait a minute. They're not there anymore. I forgot. The power coins were destroyed. The zords probably went with them, and the alien rangers wouldn't have any access to them. Oh. I guess it's good that the Sentai footage didn't conflict with that already. So Billy's gone to Aquatar. He looks good. Stock footage, different voice actor, doesn't sound anything like Billy. We've been here before. And he said he's going to stay there because he fell in love with one of the Aquatar Equations. I was about to say Aquatarian. <laughs> was one of the equations, so he's gone, and I was really freaking sad because Billy is one of my favorite Mighty Morphin Rangers, and with his stab, how he was established in Mighty Morphin, and everything he's gone through, speaking more humanoid, turning into with a tech advisor, all this stuff, and to see him leave on a note like this, not as good as Kimberly's, but just to see Billy leave was sad alone. But it was happy to see that he was finally happy, but at the same time, I wish he had stayed. But it was real weird seeing him go in the fashion he did. So we're almost done. Jason's powers aren't stable. And it's because his physiological structure isn't... Well, the powers aren't designed to stay with him or something. I don't know the exact explanation, but... His body's rejecting the powers, and Trey needs to get them back. Well, he's still in three per, uh, three pieces. So they do this really weird thing of, like, planets aligning light thing or whatever that they do to try to give him his powers back. And they manage to get it to work. I'm not, I'm busy. I'm not getting on Skype right now. Skype call bubble just popped up right in front of me. And I know Frankie's going to end up watching this later, so... You know what I was doing at the moment, Frankie. Nerd. This is the guy reviewing what Power Rangers sees on YouTube. <laughs> I'm doing this and I'm calling somebody a nerd. This is my life in a nutshell. So he ends up getting put back together and gets the Zeo... Zeo powers. The Gold Ranger powers back in his favor. Mondo shows up. Grows. We need the Megazord. No, I'm, I'm going to grow you guys. Trey manages to make the Rangers grow. This is interesting because we've never actually seen the Rangers themselves grow outside of Tommy growing when he was controlled by Rita. But there's still actually really interesting idea. Now, remember I had established earlier during that stupid Tommy's brother arc that Mondo kicked the crap out of Tommy. Well, Tommy proceeds to kick Mondo's butt this time. Zeo power's growing stronger. Like, Tommy basically didn't have any problems with him. Kicks him in the face, Mondo falls over, crown falls off, shrinks again. They think they won. Well, technically, the Rangers didn't win. They just won the fight, but they didn't win the war, because Zed did. He gave a present to... Gasket drove off in the RV. Gasket opened up, blows them all up. Now the house of gadgetry is in pieces, and that's that's the end of Zeo. Let's just say I'm not okay with how Zeo ended, and it basically. I'm a person that I've established this a lot. An ending can make or break a season for me. And, oh my gosh, like, this is like, Zeo wasn't boring enough as it was. The ending was just terrible, in my opinion. I mean, shoot, this season had a better ending than Zeo did. And that's actually kind of sad because the rest of Turbo sucked big time. But Zeo in its own right was a bit of a a step backwards from Mighty Morphin, honestly. The 
especially from season three, because season three of Mighty Morphin was actually really fun and really interesting to pay attention to and watch. Zeo felt more like a, a a rehash of MMPR season one, but not Mega Force style because it still had fifty freaking episodes, not twenty. Um, nothing. I mean, there was not really anything here to catch my attention. I mean, is that a hair inside there? No, that's a crack. Um, a fold or whatever. But um. Uh, how do I put this? Zeo was just a series of nothing happening. I went into this season with pretty decent expectations because I heard some people say that Zeo was actually a step up from Mighty Morphin. I wasn't expecting it to be, you know, the grandest thing ever. I wasn't expecting space, time force, SPD, quality, Power Ranger season. But I was expecting something entertaining, interesting, and a step up from Mighty Morphin, because Mighty Morphin definitely had a lot of room for improvement. And now they have gotten, they had gotten the story stuff down, the interesting story, plot, all the stuff down, it's from Mighty Morphin Season 3, where it felt like the writers had finally caught their stride and everything. This felt like a major step backwards from what Season 3 had gone through. Really good story, really good ending, really good character moments and whatnot. And Zeo just felt like a rehash of MMPR Season 1 with new stuff and continuing off of already established material. Mondo, I've already talked about the Machine Empire. Mondo and the Machine Empire felt like more boring Rita and Friends before Zed. Season 1 Rita. It was just boring. They never came off as a threat. They never came off as scary. They never had any major victories against the Rangers. They were just kind of there. Mondo was a joke of a villain. I mean, the best villain to come out of this season was Gasket. And that's only because he actually did interesting ideas that kind of worked. Turned Tommy against the other Rangers. That's actually pretty clever, and it was a real interesting, even though the story arc itself was, how it ended was kind of eh, I appreciated it because it was actually interesting. Something that Zeo was lacking was interesting. It was just, I wanted to like Zeo more than I did, because it had, it did some things differently, but in the grand scheme of things, it, it just dis didn't live up to Mighty Morphin. I mean, Mighty Morphin, especially Season 1, was really flat. Season 2 was more involved, but the story's more wacky, and Season 3 was the best. So I expected things to just start going up. And then, this is Season 3, and then it just kind of fell back to Season 1 material. Nothing really happened in the characters aside from Billy growing, obviously. And the whole weirdness between Tommy and Cat, which with the whole breakup via letter thing, and it was a forced thing between him and Cat that they established that they were together, but it just didn't have the charm and the the awe factor that the Tommy Kimberly thing had. I I just I really don't have anything good to say about Zio. I mean, it's not bad. It's not overdrive or turbo bad, but it's just who cares? It doesn't stink, but it, I mean, at least Mighty Morphin season one had some interesting story elements. The Green Ranger thing was interesting. The supposed finale with um where the season was supposed to end with the end of the Zoo Ranger footage was interesting. Season two had some interesting things. Season three was really interesting. Zeo had no interesting story arcs whatsoever. That's why I find it to be underwhelming compared to the rest of all of Mighty Morphin. I just I just didn't enjoy it. I, I tried to, I wanted to, but there was just so much of nothing here to really hold my interest and keep me involved 
and like it. Um, but like I keep saying, the high point was when Gasket was introduced, which was about maybe was it 39 to about maybe six episodes or so. And that was, that was about as interesting as it got because he actually came up with some interesting plans and ideas that seemed like something a real conqueror of the universe would do. Sadly, the, the theme song lied. That's how I describe Zeo. The theme lied. <laughs> it's not stronger than before. It's not better. It's a step backwards. But I'm not giving Zeo a completely hard time because it only got worse from there. Uh, you, you should know how this is going to go. Turbo is next. I don't want to talk about Turbo. I feel like I want to review this the same way I did Overdrive and just rant for 20 minutes. Uh, but I'll see. Uh, not turbo, not turbo, not turbo, not turbo.